Heals welcomes you to the third Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging. Heals is the largest non governmental organization in Europe promoting and advocating scientific research into longevity and biogerontology. Thanks to generous support from our sponsors, Heals was able to organize this conference. The conference will highlight the cutting edge of knowledge in the field of biogerontology and provide a unique opportunity for researchers, government officials, biotech executives, and advocates from around the world to meet, network, and forge new scientific collaborations. Okay, I'm Arthur from the Institute of Ethics, Rationality and Future of Humanity uh, from Brazil. It's mainly in Portuguese, it's everything in Portuguese, we just translate things. And I'm going to talk about uh, effective altruism and uh, um, uh, existential risk. Effective altruism is using the evidence uh, to the, do the most good. Uh, Peter Singel is the most known effective altruism. Uh, most of us want to make a, a difference, but we may waste uh, our time and money if we don't think uh, carefully. Uh, so we use rationality to uh, direct our time and money. Uh, the way effective altruism uh, shows the causer seeing what we will do the greatest impact <laughs> if we uh, how we can trace and usually there are things that are greatly are neglected the usually uh, they work on fighting uh, poverty uh, animal suffering and future of humanity what I most think uh, and work on is the future of hu humanity. There are other calls, but uh, I'm just going to skip it. Uh, the the cause I'm most worry about is the existential risk. That's, uh, that's when we, uh, all uh, humans beings, if we, everybody dies, we cease evolution. Uh, and here is uh, what Nick Boston made a uh, scope x severity, and he places existential risk above aging as a priority. In uh, here is another thing to think about if. Uh, of all of these three options of peace, and if 99% uh, of population are uh, died in a nuclear war, or if there are 100 people died. Of course, C is worse. Uh, there is a, a small gap between B and C, but the difference between B and C is uh, in how much impact it would happen. It's uh, much wider than from A to B, because we would lose uh, billions of, uh, we would lose a lot of in evolution, and we would have to restart over. Um, and this, the what he uh, Nick Boston most talks about uh, our biggest risks are from new inventions. Uh, from all this time uh, in the humanity, we, there happened many things uh, and many diseases that didn't kill uh, humanity. But uh, the biggest threat could come from a discovery. Maybe uh, what if uh, nuclear we weapons could be made out of uh, uh, any simple resources like mixing salt and something else and we could make something very dangerous. Maybe if we, if the technology cost starts uh, dropping, maybe if we 
people could start inventing a new virus or uh, bacteria that could uh, eliminate the human race. Maybe a, a single person could use uh, an invention to destroy everybody. So this is uh, what we the, the risk is. And once we make a discovery, we can't undiscover. And and this and this uh, the white balls are the good inventions, the good discoveries, and the grays are things that are good or can be bad, and the black ones are things that are bad and we uh, could be dan very dangerous. Uh, our institute are from these are the gr our group. Other institution uh, focusing on X risks that uh, I, I like are EMIRI and the Future of Humanity Institute. And this is a great book about AI. Uh, that's another, uh, could be a potential uh, uh, existential risk for us. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Arthur.